put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. If the video is simply too long for you, I did record a shorter version, and the link is in the description box. The Hunger Games Catching Fire. While forming the world's smallest and least successful suicide cult did get both PETA and Katniss safely out of the 74th annual Hunger Games, it did not make them very popular with President Snow of the Capitol. And with it having been a while since the end of those games, yeah, things haven't been quite the same as before. So when when President Snow shows up at Katniss's house to threaten her in person, which is, you know, it's it's nice that he cares enough to not just send someone else to do it. She quite she she pays attention. Now he wants her to quell the growing uprising in the districts to basically convince everyone that the it was not an act of defiance against the capital eating the berries. It was an act of a couple madly in love with each other. And thus the 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 twilightiness of the franchise is further indulged with Katniss having to pretend to be madly in love with Peter when in reality she isn't sure if she loves Peter or Gale. Fortunately, that's that's just the start of the story. Now, I shouldn't really say too much more about what happens, but let's leave it at that President Snow has not forgotten, and there, there will be consequences for the defiance. And with this potential rebellion, revolution, in its... It just dawn, I guess, just early stages, will Katniss encourage it? perhaps even join it. This is, is one of those sequels that really looks to the first and really tries to be a very very clearly a sequel. You can really tell that this is this belongs with the first one and yet it's it's done in a slightly different way. And it's also one of those sequels that really doesn't at all suck. It's in some ways better, maybe in, in most ways, better than the first one. And it's certainly paving the way quite nicely for a solid trilogy with a two-parter ending. Yeah. Quadri Does that technically make it a quadrilogy or so? Anyway, it's yeah. To to talk about the things that really make this have have more impact than the first. The characters are just more developed, more fleshed out. In the first one, they just feel like archetypes 
they, they don't have enough definition to them yet. And, and, and it's too bad, because even, even with the first one, the casting is great. And the, the casting of the new roles in this one is also inspired. I, yes, I, I'm very, very impressed. Everyone gives a great performance here. And, so, yeah, it, it just, everyone gets to be really, really, yeah, de defined. If everyone has a clear, a distinct personality. And the, the new roles are given quite good intros, and several of them are straight out of the book. And it just, immediately you know who these people are. You know, there, there's this pretty self-absorbed, charming guy called Finnick, who's like, the, the moment you see him, the moment he makes his entrance, he's like, you know, you know, bare-chested, and, you know, he's, he offers Katniss a sugar cube, telling her that, you know, technically they're for the horses, you know, it's the... It's the part where they're supposed to ride in on, you know, these old-timey chariots. Technically, they're for the horses, but really, we're the ones who should grab any sweet thing that we happen to see. That's fitting right there. It's just to, to, yeah, perfectly. I don't want to give away what Joanna does as her first act, but I will say that she does not give a crap. She is just... she couldn't care less. She's, she's really abrasive and it's a ton of fun. And Gina Malone nails it. I... It's just perfect. And... Amanda Plummer as, as Wyrus, I just... In the moment I saw the, the cast list for this, you know, Malone and, and Plummer, I was just... Yes! That is, that is exactly right. And I don't know the names of most of the, the actors who did the roles, but they're spot on. I mean, I, I listened to the audiobook just prior to watching the movie, and these are, you know, the, these people are how I imagined them when, when listening to the audiobook. Now, the, the world is... it feels more real. It has some, you know, futuristic aspects, as did the first one, but where the first one... It's, it's kind of like with Thor and Thor 2, you know, the, the first one looks nice, but it also feels like a backdrop in a way. It feels like something that was designed, not something that people actually live in. And here, it's just very clearly yeah, a, a place to, to live in, and it, it yeah, feels like you could reach out and touch it. It's, it's very convincing, and also, when in the first one, it, it's just like, well, they went into a forest, excuse me, and filmed stuff for, you know, arena scenes. Here, it really has that, excuse me, foreign... Uh, very, very hostile feeling to it, where you, you don't know what's going to come out of this arena. And it's, yeah, it's, it's a really well done. I, I don't want to give too much away about the arena to those who go into this not having read the book. It's, yeah, it's, it's a really good concept. Now, in general, this does really further the characters. Where Katniss in the first was mainly focused on her own survival and protecting her own family, here that kind of expands into her worrying about everyone in all 12 districts. And there is this great theme of independence versus interdependence. I, I don't want to go too much into detail about that, but just, you know, 
I, it, it would probably reveal too much if I were to. And of course, themes of government control, survival, rebellion. Now, the. There is. There, there are a number of dramatic stings in this where it just really it kind of a lot of the story does not have an awful lot of action and so the actual you know the parts of this of the movie that don't really have a lot of action to keep those from you know being I guess predictable or or just kind of to, to make them make more of an impact, every so often there are these sudden dramatic bits that are really effective, where it, it smash cuts from something to something else, for example, and yeah, it's, it's, it's a great decision, you know, as far as filmmaking goes, also in part because it's never like... It's not a jump scare if, if you know, it's, it's not something that's just there to wake up the audience and make them think that what they just saw was, was good. It's always followed up on. Like, one of the very first ones is basically that Katniss has some, some PTSD from being in the Hunger Games, and not only does that make great sense, but it's it's followed up on like right after you know someone's like wait Kat, Katniss are you okay is is this you know it's not it's not shrugged off it's actually really it's treated as something serious by the other characters as well now the and of of course again we have the you know, it's, it's the poor fighting each other rather than the rich who are, you know, who are making their lives worse. And they're fighting each other for the amusement of the rich. Who, and it's, you know, reality television and celebrity superficiality is used, you know, entertainment to distract the masses from the actual problem. And, you know, once again, Stanley Tucci does fantastic as Caesar Flickerman, the, you know, talk show host, commentator. I'm not sure anyone in real life actually has quite all the different jobs that he does. But, yeah, there, there seems to be, like, one show on television surrounding the Hunger Games, and he's basically always there, whether it's commentating on what's being seen or you know yeah like narrating to the audience filling in gaps in their knowledge or interviewing the participants and the game makers yeah anyway he does fantastic in this one you know they they bannered up his face pretty good and i say i say his face because in spite of the, the hue, he does not appear to be drunk, stoned, and he is doing his job, so it's only the face. The... There, there is a great interplay between what a dictatorial government will do to try to maintain control over a rebelling populace and what the reaction from the populace to such will be. Now... I suppose that is more or less it. The, the various characters also get more to do, so the, the actors can stretch their acting muscles. 
some some more here with PETA in the first one basically just being this little bit weak-ish looking, you know, charming enough, but that was about his character and then, you know, he confesses his love to Katniss and that's, that's his character. In this one, like early on, he talks to Katniss about how they, they're acting for the cameras, acting in love. And th that's another part of this. It, it has that thing of, you know, they're, they're basically celebrities. They're, they're living in the victor's village with, with Hamish, you know, which, where, where they have it better than the other people in the district. And it's, it's a, you know, their, their celebrity is also in part serving as the distraction, and it's also just really, you know, they don't have much of a personal life anymore. They, they can't really get rid of this, this status as celebrities. And, and, and yeah, Peter is, is on Katniss, it's, he can't go on acting for the cameras and then in real life, basically they have nothing to do with one another. Let's try to be friends. Let's, let's just, you know, at least see each other every so often in real life and, and maybe we can be friends. That's, that's all he's asking. You know, there's, there's a point where he gets a bit upset, rightfully so, and all of these things, they, they flow naturally from the character and, yeah, just, just help flesh him out, which is really good, because in the first one, you know, both Gail and Peta are just kind of figments of, you know, they're, they're just there for the young girls to fawn over, and some would say that it makes it easier for the young girls to do that if they don't particularly have any defining qualities because then the girls can just fill in the blanks themselves. But yeah, here both of them get a bit more personality. To move on to Gail, he is very interested in the uprising and pretty determined to to help it, to, to bring it to bring it into being very much. Hamish is a bit more it's I suppose mostly he's he's good comic relief, but there is also some like he's he's not just you know snarky or mentory. There there there's a bit more range to his character again. Effie, again, also somewhat comic relief. And, and more so, there's, there's more humor in this one than in the first one. And it's done right. It doesn't take the punch out of the drama. It just lets you breathe once there's been something really intense. But, but Effie also gets to show that she is... A real human being. There is there is emotion there. She's not just, you know, grotesque hairdos and the like. And and yes, again we have the, you know, grotesquely made up and dressed up people of the capital. Then you know, no one in the district think that they look even remotely good, but. They're rich and they can afford doing this and they're following along all the, you know, all this stuff about fashion and the like. The effects are better, they're more, again, it's just, there's, there's a texture to them where you feel like you could reach out and touch them, you feel like they are actually there. Now, the... This, like the first, hides much of the violence where the first one did by, you know, basically...
shaking the camera as, like crazy. This one has almost no camera shaking and certainly usually the violence is hidden by a cut to a reaction shot or it being obscured by something but a lot of the stuff that excuse me is really unpleasant in the book is still somewhat there it's it's just sort of that your imagination is supposed to do the rest but in the first one they just they toned it down a lot and then filmed it with really shaky camera so you know if you actually picked up what you were looking at and didn't get a tremendous headache from it then you were just like wait how did that kill that person that makes no sense so they do better on that here and I'd also I'd say that they do they do a pretty good job of still showing some really brutal stuff that you, you really get a sense of the the agony that these people can sometimes go through. It, it also helps that some of this agony is more psychological than physical. And yeah, I yeah, I won't give anything away about that, but just it's it's well worth. Yeah, in fact, this is. This is a very dramatic movie, a very engaging movie. I could tell that several of the, you know, several members of the audience were literally crying at several points, and I came close myself. It's, it's a really sad movie at points. It's, it really does, you know, nothing from the first is forgotten. The, the lost are not forgotten, and it it really does yeah the, the this whole struggle of the underdog against these you know the, the the rich the elite is really gripping and effective with that said the there are some bits where the the filmmakers took it a bit too far. The some some of the bad guy stuff is just cartoon villainy. Is just you know bad guys cackling at their evil plans and saying things and doing things that are just yeah. There there's this. There, there, there is a new peacekeeper, new head peacekeeper, in, in District Twelve in this movie, and I'm pretty sure that they traveled back fifteen, twenty years in time, grabbed Clint Eastwood, and put him in this movie. The dude, just exactly like Eastwood, with the with the brow and the voice. And, and the whole thing, and, and like this guy, he's really intense, and he's, he's intimidating, but some of the stuff he says and does is just really over the top, and just feels like it really wasn't necessary, especially because it's, it's not from the book, and in the book it feels more genuine, and that's a bit unfortunate. Now... Of course, as an adaptation, it does change things from the book, and there, there are things that are cut down a bit to make it work within the, the given time, and you know, the movie is 2 hours and 15 minutes, not counting the end credits, and not a moment of that is boring, so they did their job quite well. And while there are just a few aspects that do feel too left out on the cutting room floor, on the whole, they do quite well. And certainly, it seems like 
some of what they might have cut down or taken away, they've replaced with good, like, character development and, you know, it, it just, it doesn't feel like they've really, there, there's no waste here and nothing is, yeah, n nothing, nothing unnecessary is added, you might say. Now, the, I, I should definitely talk about, having talked some about the acting, I have to mention Jennifer Lawrence just completely steals this movie. She propels the thing forward with such sheer determination and intensity. She is Katniss Everdeen, and yeah, it's it's just it's amazing. I I always thought she was the perfect choice for the role. You know when when I. When I listened to the first audio book and watched Winter's Bone, I was, th yeah, Katniss Everdeen right there, and again, like, like I described of, of Peeta and, and Gail, there's more to her this time. She is, where, where in the first it was mostly about survival and, and this, you know, there, there is this this outer shell that she really cannot she she cannot lower her guard, and in this there is she does lower her guard some more, and we do get get closer to her, get learn more about her, and really see like. There's, there's a great scene between her and Prim, which the trailers show some of, which also shows that Prim has grown, and I'm really impressed with the, the young actress. Willow Shields, I think is her name, from having played victim Primrose in the first movie, to now playing this more mature, still you know, still a, a young person trying to find their place in the world, but she is growing into a healer like her mother, and she helps inspire Katniss. And it just shows that once Katniss... Once she has less of a less of a responsibility to take care of her family, because now her mother is no longer catatonic, and her sister is, you know, gradually becoming much more... much more assured than she was in the first one. And, and it allows Katniss to also just be more... Yeah, to, to let go of that some and and to move towards actually caring for every district and not focusing on her own. Which again it's it's not it's not a selfishness thing, it's just that before she you know, she had no one else to really care about than her family and now it's becoming clear to her that there might really be some way to make, you know, to help out all the districts. Now, the... And it's also just the, the role... A great, strong female character, a good female role model, and... Yeah, it's... She really does the part justice, and... Yeah, it's... It's not really necessary to say anymore, but obviously she is one to keep an eye on in the future. She is tremendously talented. Now, the... Let's see... I... 
I suppose that might more or less cover it. Now, yes, so it's it's a really great middle chapter. You you can tell that it's the middle of a trilogy with you know it doesn't have too much of a beginning or an end and it it is it exists to bridge the gap between the opening and the conclusion and it yeah and and what what comes with that is is evident here but it's tremendously engaging and I can't wait for the next one. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.